Hello and welcome to In Focus. I'm Anthony Morano. Our guest today is here to update us on a new program that will be offered by WNMU School of Nursing. It's a fully online master's degree program and the only one in the state that has a focus on rural frontier health. Please welcome Dr. John Scarborough, Associate Dean of Nursing at WNMU. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to speak on behalf of the university and our new program. Well, we're excited to have you here to talk about this program. I'd like to learn a little bit more about it. When is it beginning and what exactly will it entail? Well, we're anticipating uh, in admitting our first cohort in the fall of 2019, the fall semester. The program is, as you said, completely online. Uh, Full-time students can complete it in four to five semesters. Kind of depends on how aggressively they want to go after it. The majority of our students we do find are working nurses, so it's not so common for people to go full-time. The majority would go full-time. And what they can look forward to is learning a lot about providing nursing health care in a rural setting. Rural slash frontier is the federal designation for it. Yeah, I find that really interesting because with that designation, I'd kind of like to hear how that makes this program so unique with that designation. Well, the major majority of nursing schools across the United States uh, educate nurses to become novice generalists just to enter. And you could pretty much go anywhere, urban, rural, whatever type of community. This is a master's degree, so it's a, a one step up, a little more advanced. And it does focus on some of the issues that uh, we encounter in rural areas. Uh, one example might be if you're a nurse and you're in Albuquerque or Las Cruces and the doctor's upstairs and you're in the hospital says you need a CT scan, they call down to the CT scan lab and you go right down. If you're in Silver City or perhaps not Silver City but most of the state is rural, to get a CAT scan you're talking a two or three hour drive and setting that up. So as a nurse, what can you do to kind of mitigate the situation between now and then and, and, and how would you treat someone differently uh, particularly when the access to care is hours away instead of just lickety split they're just right there yeah you know I hear um, lawmakers and experts in um, you know the public health field talk a lot about how technology may help rural health communities when it comes to health care is there any sort of training with that that the nurses uh, will be receiving online? Yes, we do. We have a large telehealth component that's built into it. Uh, we use a product called Zoom. I'm not advertising yes. for it, okay, uh, where we can interconnect in the, the student's practice uh, at, at a distance. And you can actually interview someone and find out a pretty fair amount about their health. So that's like a online um, messaging, video conferencing. Video conferencing. It's much like FaceTime, I suppose, or mm -hmm. Skype is the other one. Uh, yeah kind of similar to that so uh, the country's kind of getting that way to get access to truly remote areas where it's difficult I, I don't know that we'll ever get away from the human touch that the face-to-face -face contact and seeing someone in person but at least this is a lot closer you can say like uh, hey if they're a nurse practitioner can, can you look at this here and tell me do I need to come in or am I okay uh, so as just maybe one example I see now We've heard for years uh, the need for healthcare practitioners in rural areas, especially here in our border region that we live in. How is WNMU uh, going to meet these challenges with this program? Well, one of what we're hoping to do is to get them used to the idea of coming to school in New Mexico, Western New Mexico. It is completely online. And there's a body of research that shows that students who do their studies in an area and residencies in particular for physicians and for advanced practice nursing, they tend to stay where they were. And so we're trying to educate the students also to prepare them to work. It's a, it's a different set of challenges uh, in a rural area as compared to remote. And I would take up the rest of two hours talking about the specifics of that without going into it too much. The shortage exists pretty much nationwide but is particularly acute in New Mexico. Uh, the last couple of years I know we are losing people. The population uh, is decreasing. Yes. A lot of people come and they will get education and leave which is problematic in and of itself. So our students reflect that as well is my point. They come, they get an education and they want to go somewhere uh, glitzy uh, on the Vegas Strip or something, you know, uh, we're this uh, very different from our rural setting, which is a lot quieter. Some of us like that, that it's a lot quieter. But the younger people, which most nurses coming out of school are 
2021, there is a segment of the population that is coming back in and retraining, but still the majority uh, are still younger and they seek out other areas than rural New Mexico. So is this program going to be just available for people living in New Mexico or can people living outside of New Mexico take part? In no, sir, program? we would welcome anyone. Our, many of the problems that New Mexico experiences are not uh, indigenous to New Mexico, Montana, Idaho, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota. There are a lot of rural areas facing very similar challenges. Uh, uh, in spite of Texas with the huge population centers they have, there are large expanses of area where people are medically underserved as well, just because the state's so huge, because of the distances involved. I'm sure you have a grasp of this uh, next issue, it, you know, being an associate dean in the program. How long do nursing students who graduate end up, you know, taking this career path? Is there a dramatic uh, I guess, turnover in nursing? Do people last in this field? Yes, we have a, a double-edged sword we're kind of fighting against here. You're spot on correct with the, the first observation that uh, the latest research I'm aware of, somewhere 40 to 50 percent of all nurses who graduate with a, their first nursing degree and go to work in a hospital will leave the hospital within two years. Uh, they seek out other settings. It is very demanding work, and it's not what it looks like on television, <laughs> okay? Uh, and so that's a challenge, and a lot of people decide, I don't know if I want to do this. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, I'm sure a lot of people may be attracted to the healthcare industry and nursing because, you know, they're almost guaranteed a job yes. practically upon yes. completion with their education and certification. And also the pay is fairly good. Yes. Um, for you know New Mexico, it's definitely above the median salary. Uh, so I'd like to hear what are those things that people encounter while they're in the field that really drives them out? Uh, several things, it, it, it depends. Uh, probably, I, I know a significant amount of, of uh, turnover exists because of the 12 hour shifts that uh, we are now expecting nurses to work 12 hours at a time. So you only have two, one replaces the other. It used to be three with eights, you know. So it's easier to have a child or, you know, go into work at seven o'clock, get off at three, pick up your kids and go home. If you go to work at 7 a.m., you don't get out till 7 p.m. at the earliest possible time. So it's long stretches of work on your feet, which can be tiring, you get a little older, and uh, it can kind of mess with your social life that way. Opposite of that is if you work the night shift uh, overnight till the next day. Uh, it's a benefit to the institution because you have fewer handoffs. We find a lot of errors within nursing made during the handoff, changing. Uh, patients are assigned, nurses are assigned responsibility for a patient, okay? When you're assigned as a responsibility for a patient, your mind, I cannot leave until my replacement comes in. It's a law, I can't abandon you, so I have to stay. If you're coming in late to replace me, I stay un until you're gone. And uh, it's a tremendous responsibility and kind of coupled with that, you can't just go and have your teeth filled or your dentist appointment or hair appointment or whatever else you need to do. During that 12 hours, you walk in the door, you're there for a 12 hour time frame until you leave. And some people find that uh, more challenging. And this is true of the acute care hospital setting I'm speaking. This is not really true of doctor's office and nurses work in lots of places. Mm -hmm. So, but the bulk where we really have the greatest need at this point uh, is in the hospital at the bedside. And that's also fueled by one other thing I wanna mention here is that uh, we're getting old uh, as a population. The boomers are retiring. And so there's this huge influx of people needing service uh, and uh, there's not enough people to keep up with that. It, it, it presents a challenge. So if you're an RN, mm -hmm. why would you want to pursue a master's degree in this program? What are the benefits and specifically with this program? Well, uh, the easiest way I know to sum this up is uh, we know better and we do better. So it's higher education and I'm easily a proponent for more education. It's always a good thing. There's a lot of research shown that the higher the degree of education the nurse has, the better outcomes there are. Uh, and that's from associate's degree to bachelor's degree to master's degree. Uh, anyone who wishes to in enhance their career and go further beyond just the bedside nurse, basic care and basic working in a physician's office. You need the masters and now it's reaching the doctoral level pretty much. Most nursing faculty, it's very 
much desired that they have the doctorate and there are a few masters prepared out there. So if you want to go that line. Uh, benefits to this program, uh, in particular, it is set up so that the majority of the requirements to become an advanced health care practitioner, advanced, I should have written this one down, I'm sorry. Uh, there's sorry. A, st a national certification you can mm -hmm. get that certifies you to work in public health as a nurse. The name has changed several times and I lose track, guys, sorry about that. So they would be prepared and that will elevate their career, they make more money and they can work independently. The other thing this degree does is we have a post-master's certificate for family nurse practitioner that takes three more semesters at the end and it piggybacks right onto it and again focuses on rural and community frontier health. So what about the instructors that will be taking part in this fully online program? Um, are they all at WNMU? And um, it, how will people be able to access their instructors uh, to, if they have, you know, questions or uh, regarding this? Um, is, it, is it like your typical online uh, learning environment? It's a little more immersed than your typical online environment. The location of the instructors uh, will probably 95 to 100 percent will be on campus at Western. However, sometimes we do need to hire adjuncts. Uh, nursing faculty, we have some of the similar issues with nurses as we're getting old and we retire and, and that becomes problematic at times and getting someone to teach is not such an easy thing to do. But for the student, we use the Canvas Learning Management System which uh, NMSU and a lot of other schools use as well. Uh, and through it's a very rich environment, offers all kinds of video interactive discussions, uh, submit assignments, receive assignments. We've had some uh, asynchronous conversations where the individuals have to speak their perspective or on a discussion topic and upload that, and then they speak to the other one and record that. So it's a little more engaging than just previously, I think it was rather dry, just all text based. Uh, we do also, the university has purchased a license to use Zoom and many of the instructors hold sessions with groups of students or office hours can be held one on one, no matter where the student is. Uh, I've worked with a doctoral student who is uh, in a Navy base in Japan. Okay, and it's amazing what we can do with technology. It's like they're sitting right there. So there's a, a certain personal touch that comes along with it. It's not all just canned uh, online, but everything is delivered through that venue so you don't have to attend class, if it were, at set times, unless we set up a Zoom session that students request. You have brought up a couple times in this interview that there's going to be a large turnover with baby boomers retiring. Is this something that the nursing community and the health community is really concerned about right now? Oh, absolutely. Uh, if you are a nurse working, uh, there's just always plenty more patients coming in. I don't know how to say that. And uh, well, life is such that people get sick, people have unexpected things happen. You get a flat tire, whatever, okay? And so if I'm at work, and again, with that 12 hour shift, I cannot leave and you had a flat coming in and you're four hours late, I get to stay and work 16 hours and there's not someone I can usually just pick up the phone and say, hey, can you come in for just four hours? That's a rarity. So it, it really stretches staff thin and a lot of states are having uh, some lively discussions uh, about nurse to patient ratios. How many people can one nurse be expected to take mm -hmm. care of? This is another kind of a twist with today's technology is that uh, the people in hospitals are sicker. Uh, I don't know if you've seen people go home much quicker than yeah. they used to. Having a baby used to be like a week, yeah. you know, and now it's almost drive by. I laugh sometimes, but it's the next day. Not altogether bad because we have a bunch of sick people in one place in the hospital, mm -hmm. but the, the intensity of care is, is a lot more when you have five very sick people instead of one that's kind of sick and three that are kind of waiting till someone can pick them up. We just have about 30 seconds left, but how can folks find out more information about this program? Everything you need is online, wnmu.edu and the School of Nursing. All of our programs have contact information, phone numbers, emails. We would love to hear from anyone interested. All right, Dr. John Scarborough, thank you so much for joining us and sharing more about this program. And we want to thank you for joining us on another episode of In Focus. I'm Anthony Morano.